Hi everyone, this is Anandita Paulus and today's video is actually on a topic in which lately I've been really diving deeply into and I have been really interested in and that is the topic of how our diet influences our mind and body and the effect that our diet has on our ability to sit and meditate. It is said that Buddha recommended to stay away from mind-altering substances. So substances such as CBD, DMT, THC and any other such substances. In fact, including even alcohol and caffeine, of course, or cigarettes. Because they perpetuate delusion. Now, I know I have come across a lot of videos or even people asking in forums about certain drugs and primarily, of course, hallucinogenics. And you know, people ask questions about if these drugs can be used to take yourself to a higher level of perception and have spiritual experiences. And yeah, if you Google online, you will find a lot of different discussions in different forums and different videos on YouTube on the topic. And a lot of people would say to stay away from them. And a lot of people would say that they have had these amazing experiences. So here is my take on it. I really believe that when you are using chemicals to alter the state of your body, yes, you might experience a temporary high. There is no doubt about it. Because our body is really a veritable chemical machine. You put certain chemicals, it will react a certain way. That is just science. So if you put chemicals from outside, whether they are some kind of mushrooms or no matter whether they are herbal or man-made, but chemicals are chemicals. So when you take chemicals from outside in order to have certain elevated spiritual experiences, you might have those experiences. I'm not denying that you wouldn't have them, but you will also experience an extreme crash. That's what most people have experienced. Now, of course, I will have the disclaimer that I have not personally experienced any of the hallucinogenics myself. I don't think I will ever be testing them out on myself. But based on my research and based on what just makes common sense to me, I feel like when you take chemicals that takes you high, it also brings you down. And the crash is really, really bad. And that's what gets you so dependent on these chemicals, that you really enjoy that high so much that when the crash happens, you don't know how to maintain that high on your, by yourself. So you need again that same chemical to take you there again. And then again and again, and it gets really addictive. On the other hand, yogis are said to have experienced those high states of consciousness without taking any kind of hallucinogenics. And it's not just that only yogis can do it. In fact, even scientists believe that our body has receptors for some of these chemicals. And certain chemicals like DMT can be actually produced by us, ourselves, without taking any kind of drugs from outside. But because we don't know how to produce these chemicals in our body by ourselves, we get dependent upon these drugs. So in my opinion, if you learn how to meditate, you can take yourself to those states of mind and you can have those experiences and you will be able to sustain them for longer periods of time without experiencing the extreme crash that people experience when they take drugs. So if you want to avoid the roller coaster that happens with outside chemicals, I would definitely suggest not trying any of these outside chemicals, but just learning how to produce these chemicals in your body yourself through meditation. And now coming back to today's topic, the topic of how diet can influence our meditation practice. And as many of you might know, I have been an avid meditator for quite some time now and I have taken many meditation workshops. I've taken in-person workshops as well as online workshops, home study programs, you name it. So I have tried meditation programs in various different forms from various different teachers and I really hope that one of these programs will ever talk about the relationship between diet and your ability to sit quietly and meditate. But unfortunately enough, None of these previous programs that I had taken were ever talking about the relationship between 
diet and meditation. It's only in the recent times when I started taking certain meditation workshops where the concept of the importance of diet and how it affects your meditation sessions was actually discussed. And that's what got me really interested in Ayurveda. Now, again, another disclaimer that I don't live my life based on an Ayurvedic textbook. Definitely, I'm doing a lot of things wrong, but I don't believe in following anything to the extreme. I just believe that do whatever you can incorporate in your life easily, seamlessly, effortlessly on a daily basis. Because if something is very hard for you to incorporate, chances are that you are going to give it away. So it's nice to start with baby steps and that's what I'm doing. And who knows where I will be in a few years. But currently, I have been reading a lot about Ayurveda and the influence of diet on our mind and body system, even in our emotions. And based on my research and also my first-hand experience, these things that I'm going to share with you today is not just something that I've read in a textbook and I'm just regurgitating it in front of you, but these are things that I've actually applied in my life. I have been for the last almost one year and I have seen changes in my meditation practice and overall in my mental and emotional being. And I have found them extremely helpful and that's why I'm sharing them here with you. So my first tip would be to practice eating mindfully or eating consciously because how we eat really matters. And what I mean by that is I have noticed myself that you know years ago I had this bad habit of always eating while watching TV. And sometimes I would be watching TV, sometimes it would be just YouTube on my phone. Even though I was aware of the fact that I should not be eating and watching TV at the same time, but I was still doing it. But finally, I decided to let that go. And once I stopped watching TV or, you know, YouTube on my phone, or just, you know, being distracted, doing something else while eating, once I stopped doing that, I really saw that how much more enjoyable it was, just the act of eating. And now I really enjoy eating just quietly. And I have seen what a big difference it makes when I am out at a restaurant or at a party, eating with my friends, when I'm talking and really busy interacting with others versus when I'm just out with my husband and the two of us, we, we just tend to eat quietly. We talk before and after, but during our meal, we're not really very chatty. And we have both discussed this with each other that it's so much better we enjoy the food so much more when we are just eating quietly versus when we are distracted in a party. And that's what we do even at home. Since it's just the two of us, it's easier for us to just eat quietly. And that has been really, really good for me for many different reasons. First of all, I'm eating more consciously, so I don't tend to overeat. Secondly, I enjoy my meal more. And thirdly, I am not eating compulsively out of compulsions. Because often when I'm busy or distracted, you know, watching TV or talking to people, I'm eating certain things even when I don't like them just because they're in front of me. But when I'm eating mindfully, quietly, just me with the food, then that doesn't happen. Then I'm eating only what I want to eat versus just because it's in front of me and everybody's eating it. So I'm also putting it in my mouth. That doesn't happen. Secondly, another important thing that I came across is the importance of chewing your food enough. And this is one thing that even in my family, my mother used to say, but I haven't really been very mindful about that previously while growing up. But lately, I have started becoming more mindful about how I'm chewing my food. Now, of course, there are certain yogic textbooks that talk about chewing your food each morsel 24 times. I feel like you don't necessarily have to chew each and every morsel 24 times. Again, mindfulness will help you decide what needs to be chewed more and what you can chew less. For instance, if you are chewing a piece of meat, of course it would need more chewing. If you are eating a banana, that's not gonna need 24 times each bite. So when you are eating mindfully, when you're eating consciously, you can also become more mindful of how well are you chewing the food in your mouth before swallowing. Because 50% of the digestion is supposed to happen in your mouth. A lot of us are not chewing our food enough. And what happens when you don't chew enough is that the food that is going to the stomach is not 
the way it's supposed to go. It is not, the stomach is expecting the food to be digested 50%, but instead it is not completely chewed. So now the stomach has to work over time. And that causes, of course, so now your stomach has to use more energy for digestion. And that brings certain amount of lethargy or drowsiness in the body. A lot of people who complain about feeling tired and sleepy right after a meal, they might benefit from chewing their food more. It will do two things. First of all, it will help you to control the portion of your food. And secondly, it will also help your stomach to digest the food more easily because it is expecting that the food that is swallowed is partially digested. So when the enzymes are properly mixed with the food in your mouth and it's nicely broken down, then the stomach has to work harder. And that would take away less energy from your system towards digestion. So that might help. Of course, another thing is to really watch out for what exactly you are eating that is causing the sleepiness or the lethargy. That could be another reason too. But I have seen that a lot of people, they don't chew their food enough. Of course, I'm guilty of that. But honestly, when I go out to eat with people, I sometimes notice that some people, they just finish their food like that in seconds. I'm a slow eater in general and even then I feel that I should be chewing even more. But some people I've seen myself that they are eating so quickly there is no way they are chewing their food properly. And of course, digestion issues, weight loss issues, all these things happen when the food is not chewed properly. It begins with that very first step. In fact, many yogic textbooks even say that more than 90% of all ailments of the body actually arise from your stomach or your gut. So a good digestion is extremely important for a healthy body. If you are not feeling healthy and you sit down to meditate, your meditation is not going to go well. Because if you are ill, you're sick or you're having digestive issues, it will be very hard for you to calm your body down and even calm your mind and emotions down to just sit quietly and meditate. Another important thing is not just what you consume, but also the attitude that you have towards your food. So practicing gratitude right before eating or maybe saying a little prayer before you eat, that would help a lot in two things. First of all, when you are practicing gratitude, you are saying thank you to the meal whether it is vegetables or whether it is meat, doesn't matter. But when you are saying thank you to this food that has given its life for you and is now becoming one with you, that just changes, that triggers a certain chemical reaction in your body. And I have spoken about this in many other videos too, how our emotions can trigger certain chemical reactions in our body. And there's also a book called power versus force that talks a lot about the power of emotions and the scale of emotions and so forth. So when we are in a state of gratitude, that just brings a certain change in our body, a certain change in our chemistry, in our body chemistry. So no matter what you are eating, whether you are eating fruits and vegetables or whether you are eating meat, it is always best to eat it with gratitude, a thank you prayer. And secondly, when we practice praying before our meal, it also takes away compulsiveness from the act of eating. Because eating is such a basic process to our life. It is such a basic process that is connected to our survival instinct that a lot of people are really compulsive when it comes to eating. Especially when you're really hungry and there is food in front of you. Your instinct is to immediately go grab the food and gobble it all down. But when you learn to have that mastery over your first instincts, you know, no matter how hungry you are, you can still wait for two more minutes. You can pray, or you can say thank you to the food, and then you can start eating. That little bit of self-control, that little bit of mindfulness can actually go a long way. Not just when it comes to eating, but in general in life. It is the very first step that you can start taking to move you from unconsciousness to consciousness, which is basically the purpose of all spiritual activities, including meditation. Fourthly, eating according to your age and also according to your activity levels. Now, this might sound like a no-brainer, 
but I see very often people not really eating according to their age or according to their activity level. Again, I have been in the past really <laughs> guilty of doing the same. But now that I have started practicing more mindful eating, I have noticed that my diet has automatically gone down quite a bit without even me trying. And it is not difficult for me anymore to control the amount of food that I'm eating. There is no more compulsiveness around food. And so when we are eating according to our age and according to our activity level, then you are not burdening your system with excess amount of food. So if you are living an extremely active life, of course, you would need to eat more food and your body will tell that to you. On the other hand, if you are not living an extremely active life, but you are still eating three to four meals every single day, just because that's been your habit since childhood, then it might be time to start eating more mindfully and reduce the number of times you're taking a meal. And that is also going to help you with your meditation sessions, because when you sit down to meditate, if your stomach is heavy or your system is sluggish and slow because of all the heavy meals you've eaten or you have been eating throughout the day, that would really hinder you getting deeper into your meditation sessions. Also in yoga, a lot of systems of yoga actually suggest that when you cross the age of 35, you should cut your meals down to just two meals a day. If you have underlying medical conditions or if you lead an extremely active life, then you might need more food. But one of the things that a lot of nutritionists these days and even scientists after spending millions of dollars on you know, different research have realized is the importance of intermittent fasting. And intermittent fasting is basically eating less during the day and no snacking in between the meals so that you really have a long gap between your meals. And in yoga, as well as in Ayurveda, they suggest that to eat with the sun, which means that when the sun is rising, it mimics the metabolism in your body. Your metabolism is what controls your you know, digestion and the energy that your body produces from the digestion of the food. So as the sun is rising, that's when your metabolism is heating up. And when the sun is at its peak during the noon, those hours are the time when your metabolism is at its highest. So the heaviest meal of the day should be the lunch. And then slowly as the sun starts setting, your metabolism also starts going down. And so the lightest meal of the day should be the dinner. And as per Ayurveda, you should have your dinner before the sun sets. And if you're having after sunset, it should be a really light meal. And they also suggest to have at least four to eight hours of gap between your meals. So when you follow this, you're automatically following intermittent fasting rules. If you're eating before sunset and then you're not snacking in between, then the next day you wake up, there is already a huge gap between your breakfast and the previous day's meal. And when you try to have a four to six hours of gap between your next meal, then it gives your body sufficient time to digest the food because while there is food in your system, while there is food in your belly, a lot of the body's energy is actually diverted towards digestion of the food. So in order for your body to heal, repair and do the other work, it is important that the belly is empty, the stomach is empty. So that the energy can be now utilized towards repair, rejuvenation and other things that the body needs more. If the body is constantly busy digesting food, that really tires the whole system down. In fact, meditation happens best on empty stomach. And I really didn't know about this before, but once I knew and I started experimenting with it, I have really discovered that when you are in an empty stomach or in a really light stomach condition, that's the best time to meditate. So it is suggested that when you meditate, you don't have any caffeine, any caffeinated drinks, or even if you are used to smoking, then to avoid smoking for two hours prior to meditation or avoid drinking anything caffeinated at least two hours prior to meditation. And the best thing is to wake up in the morning and meditate before you have your cup of tea or coffee. Because when you take caffeine, then it has a certain effect on your nervous system and it hypes up or over-energizes your nervous system. 
and that would make it really difficult for your mind to settle down or your emotions and body to settle down peacefully in meditation when your nervous system is on hyper alert with caffeine and finally here are some of the foods which you could avoid if you want to become more meditative i have personally found this very helpful and some of these might come as a surprise it was a surprise for me believe me but now that i have been practicing staying away from these food items it has really helped me a lot in going deeper into my meditation sessions more easily and these foods are onion garlic green chili and for my indian viewers you know these are like the favorite things that indians love to use in literally every recipe and i really loved using onion garlic and green chilies in every single recipe that i was cooking at home but now i don't and initially it was a little bit hard for me but it was really not that big a deal especially when i started seeing the benefits now i'm completely used to cooking without onion and garlic sometimes i use it maybe very little portions if i'm cooking for friends and maybe a party then i would use it but for my daily cooking every day i have really really cut down on it and it has helped in many ways it has helped improve my digestion and it also helps in keeping my mind much more calmer i had no idea that onion garlic green chilies these foods including caffeine as well these foods over activate or over stimulate our nervous system now giving up caffeine was actually pretty easy for me because i was only having like a cup of tea or coffee in the morning and i switched to decaf so i haven't completely given up but i have switched to decaf tea and i don't have it before my meditation session i always have it after now i know a lot of teachers out there teach about the benefits of eating onion and garlic in your diet every single day in fact i have seen a lot of videos by a very famous teacher who goes by the name of medical medium really supporting the idea of eating onion and garlic in your diet every day and while i agree that onion and garlic have a lot of medicinal properties but do you consume medicines every day they have a lot of antibacterial properties i agree completely but do you take antibiotics every day or do you only take it when you are ill when you are sick then you should definitely go for antibiotics foods that have medicinal properties but just like the way i will not be taking a cough syrup every single day thinking that you know if i have cough syrup every day then i will prevent any future cough it doesn't work like that if i'm putting medicines into my body every single day it doesn't prevent me from getting sick in the future it only what it does is that my body now becomes used to this medicine and when the cough happens the medicine doesn't work anymore so it actually makes your system weaker rather than stronger so just in the same way when you eat foods which have medicinal properties be mindful that you are eating them when you are actually feeling sick and not every single day when you eat onions and garlic or any kind of food that has medicinal properties like antibiotic properties they not only kill the unhealthy bacteria but they also kill the healthy bacteria in your stomach and your gut and that hampers your digestion it can cause bloating gas acidity and many other digestion issues plus they are also nervous stimulants and so it will make you more restless more anxious or easily hyped up and if you feel like you are already what a lot of people call as type a that you know if you feel like you are already very anxious or you get easily worked up then it is best to stay away from foods which are nervous stimulants like onion garlic green chili asafoetida asafoetida is actually a herb that is used very commonly in certain indian recipes it's not really very commonly used in the west at all and caffeine of course cutting down on caffeine drinking smoking these are all things that either make your system hyper alert by stimulating your nervous system too much or it brings dullness and sluggishness a lethargy into your system and both are not conducive to a good meditation session you don't want to be hyped up when you sit down to meditate and you also don't want to be drowsy and lethargic when you sit down to meditate so i hope you found these five tips helpful let me know in the comments below which one of these are you planning to incorporate first or which ones of these are you already incorporating i look forward to hearing from you 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then like it, share it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.